Hello and welcome to Insight of Thalmology. This is Dr. Amrit welcoming you to another series. The series we are discussing is the hypopigmented lesions of the retina. That means all the white lesions and yellow lesions that we see on the fundus, let us try to make them easy one by one. So the macular lesions are best examined, examined using the stereo biomicroscopy through a dilated pupil using a non-contact lens. So either you use a 78 diopter lens or you use a 90 diopter lens or we can do uh, use a 20 diopter lens and do an indirect ophthalmoscopy. Usually the macular examination is the most uh, uh, painful for the patient because we are directly focusing the light onto the macula which is the most sensitive part of the retina. So a slit uh, height should usually be less and the width also should be kept as minimum as possible. So there are a few questions that we ask, uh, that we have to ask as we look at the lesion. So the first question is, is the lesion single or there are multiple lesions of the similar kind? Is the lesion present in one eye that is unilateral or is it bilateral? Is there a particular pattern in which the lesions are present? Are they arranged in a reticular pattern or they are diffusely present? So what is the pattern in which those lesions are present? And if possible, what is the depth of the lesion that we are looking at? Are they subretinal or they are intraretinal, right? So that is what is meant by the depth of the lesion. Do the deposits have well-defined edges? So are they like sharply cut? Uh, are they sharply cut borders present to the lesion, or they are very diffuse edges? Are they uh, are they shiny? Because you know sometimes the uh, crystalline deposits will look shiny. Or are they more of very dull appearance? Is there any associated vitreous haze which is present to those hypopigmented lesions? And do you get any history from the clues? Uh, sorry, the clues from the history. That means what is the age of the patient? Are we dealing with a uh, patient who is falling into the category of ARMD? That is age-related macular degeneration. Are we dealing with a patient who has any systemic problem like diabetic mellitus or hypertension or any kidney disease like CKD? in which maybe we are looking at the hard exudates which are coming from the vasculopathies associated with these systemic conditions or are we uh, looking at a young child so all these histories are very important is there any history of recent travel which might actually lead to any uh, infections in the retina is there any history of pets which might actually lead to toxoplasma which might uh, actually give you a hyperpigmented lesion with a vitreous haze in front right so all these uh, important clues from the history are also important which help you to categorize these lesions appropriately so now let us go and look at these lesions one at a time and the first important lesions is the drusen now there are so many types of drusens so what are drusens first of all drusens are the commonest types of deposits and these are actually the deposits uh, which are present below the retinal pigment epithelium okay so in my anatomy of retina i told you that the uh, outermost layer of the retina is the retinal pigment epithelium and uh, outer to that outer to the retinal pigment epithelium we have the choroid so drusens are nothing but they are the abnormal material mostly the lipids which uh, lipids and proteins which get accumulated beneath the rpe and in between the Brooks membrane and the RPE right so usually the age in which we see drusens is about 45 years of age and 60 years of age as a matter of fact uh, this age group is very important and above the age of 60 drusens are almost almost universal so almost everyone above the age of 60 will have these drusens present particularly in the macula however below 45 years of age it is very rare to find drusens in the in the retina however there are certain conditions where we do find drusens below the age of 45 or now with this basic introduction about drusens, let us dig deeper into the drusens. So there are so many types of drusens. And the first type of drusen that I will be discussing is the hard drusens. So the hard drusens actually are very small drusens and they are discrete. So what I mean to say by discrete is that they have well-defined borders and small is that their size is about 63 microns. Now the question is, how do you know by looking at a fundus that the lesion size is 63 microns? So that question will be answered very soon. Next, 
the drusens will be about yellowish whitish in color and they are punctate so punctate means dot like since they are small in size they can also be described as punctate lesions right now the important feature about drusen is that whenever you find a hard drusen it is uh, almost universally present after the age of 60 and presence of hard drusen itself is not sufficient for the diagnosis of age related uh, maculopathy okay and moreover it is not associated with the risk of development of choroidal neovascular membrane which is seen in the case of wet armd right so hard drusens are mostly benign drusens now what do you find in hard drusens hard drusens are basically made up of hyaline material and sometimes they're also made up of calcium so you can remember h for hard drusens and h for hyaline material now uh, in most of the drusens i will be telling you certain imaging modalities also how to differentiate these drusens from one another so important point about hard drusen is that when we do a fluorescent angiography hard drusens will actually show pinpoint window defects and in my video on uh, fluorescent angiography i told you what is meant by window defects so this is a picture which is showing the hard drusens so you can see they are very tiny drusens and how tiny are they so let us see this so this is the blood vessel and this blood vessel the size of the blood vessel or a vein is approximately 120 to 125 microns right and what did i tell you about hard drusens hard drusens are usually less than 65 microns right so roughly if you consider a blood vessel and take half of that blood vessel that would be the size of a hard drusen so hard drusens are smaller than half the diameter of the uh, retinal veins right so over here also you can see these small small deposits often we miss them on on the uh, normal eye examination also because they're too tiny they can often be missed right so these are the retinal veins and you can see that these drusen size are is actually very smaller compared to these retinal veins also less than 65 microns and they're not associated with armd they're not sufficient uh, uh, to diagnose early armd alone now this picture over here actually has all types of drusens so there are certain calcified drusens that means the brighter yellowish ones and there are soft drusens which are bigger drusens but the, the tiny drusens which I want to show you over here are the hard drusens which are seen here and these hard drusens if you do an OCT you can see these tiny uh, elevations on the RPE okay that is retinal pigment epithelium that you can see so these are nothing but these are the hard drusens that is the hyaline deposits which are present at the level of the rp and the brux membrane now what happens is that as these elevations are present the overlying rp because the i what did i tell you that the hard drusens or the drusens in particular they will have a deposition of these lipoproteinaceous material below the retinal pigment epithelium so when they get deposited below the retinal pigment epithelium the overlying rpe will get thinned out and will get atrophied now because of that overlying rpe atrophy we are going to see the window defect so what are window defects window defect is nothing but whenever you have an opening in the rpe the underlying choroidal fluorescence can be seen on the fluorescent angiography at this fluorescent angiogram okay in which you can see that the first picture is the early av uh, arteriovenous phase so you can see that this vein the arteries are filled but the veins are showing the lamina flow that means that it is the early arteriovenous phase of the fluorescent angiogram and right in the early phase itself you can see these punctate hyperfluorescence over here like you can see here and this area okay these punctate hyperfluorescence is nothing but this fluorescence is coming from the choroid fluorescence and as the choroidal fluorescence increases you can see they are becoming more brighter in the subsequent films right and they are the maximum bright in the later films so what is meant by window defect in a window defect the fluorescence and the brightness will increase in intensity as the film as the fluorescent angiography goes on or as the time passes however there will be no increase in the size of those fluorescence right the size does not increases just the uh, brightness of the fluorescence will increase and uh, later on as the choroidal fluorescence decreases this fluorescence is also going to go down so you can remember it as a window 
and you can remember a sun so just like the sun is going to rise you're going to see this window lighting up and as the sun sets down this window again is going to become lighter in its brightness okay so that is the window defect that window defect is seen in the case of hard brucens because of the overlying rpe atrophy the next type of drusens are these soft drusens. Now, the difference between the soft drusens and the hard drusen is mainly the size. The drusens of the soft variety are greater than 64 microns and the borders also are ill-defined. They are not well-defined borders. Now, the color is also different. They are a little bit paler in color. So, they are pale yellow placoid lesions. So, placoid means that they are flatter lesions and over there in hard drusens what did we see we saw that there was an overlying rpe atrophy because of which we were seeing those window defect on the fluorescent angiography however in soft drusen we will have rpe detachment so wherever the uh, so rpe detachment is nothing but if you have these brooks membrane and rpe this rpe is going to look like this elevated over the area of soft drusen and that is called rpe detachment now soft drusens are dangerous although the name is soft they are dangerous because there is more risk of developing age-related macular degeneration now what do you see on fundus fluorescent angiography since there is rpe detachment what will happen there is a space because of that detachment so the choroid the fluorescence is actually the fluorescent is going to actually pull up in this area gradually and you will see hyperfluorescence on the ffa and this hyperfluorescence is because of the pooling of the dye because there is an rpe detachment now all these soft drusens can actually accumulate together that means this drusens and this drusen over here they can get mixed up together and they can form a large drusen and this drusen can cause a big pigment epithelial detachment that means initially they were having small small rp detachment now the, the two drusens can mix together and form a larger drusen and there can be a bigger rpe detachment and such an rp detachment which is occurring because of the drusens is called drusenoid ped or pigment epithelial detachment so have a look at this picture over here you can see these pale yellow color lesions they are quite big and you can see over here the blood vessel actually passing over it okay the blood vessel is passing over it indicating that the lesion is actually sub retinal okay not sub retinal it is actually it is below the level of retina right so over here what happens is all these vessels are present just in the nerve fiber layer right so if the lesion is present below that it means that it is present below the level of retina so over here you can see these pale color lesions they do not have very well defined borders as you can see and they are much bigger than the size of these blood vessels right so they are quite huge and because and why are they having ill-defined borders let me ask you the reason why they have ill-defined borders is because they have overlying rpe detachment so because of the overlying rpe detachment their borders will become blurry or fuzzy now let us have a look at this picture over here so these are our soft drusens. You can see these pale whitish lesions. They are present below the level of the vessels. That means they are deeper in their uh, so deeper. They are more deeper situated, and you can see their borders are not well defined. They are much larger. On OCT also, you can see these dome shape elevation. They are nothing but they are the RPE detachments now now i want you to look at this ffa image so in the first picture is you can see these hyperfluorescent areas right and this is the late av phase you can see how bright these hyperfluorescent area are why because they are not from the leaks they're actually the choroidal fluorescence that we are seeing because of the rp defects in the case of hard drusens however in case of soft drusen you can see over here the hyperfluorescence is also very fuzzy hyperfluorescence and it is not as bright as that of the hard drusen because there's an rp detachment and the dye is actually pooling over here and because of that pooling of the dye you are seeing this fuzzy borders and this hyperfluorescence and this is the soft drusens 
Now, as I told you that drusens can get accumulated and they can form a larger soft drusen which can cause a pigment epithelial detachment and such a detachment is called drusenoid RPE detachment. Now, drusenoid RPE detachment is important because it is a precursor of wet AMD. So, what I mean to say is once you get a drusenoid PAD, you should uh, warn the patient that he can develop wet age-related macular degeneration which is associated with choroidal neovascular membrane okay which is associated with choroidal neovascular membrane so have a look at this picture so all these are over here there is actually an amalgamation of soft drusens and hard drusens but here clearly you can see these are bigger ones these are the soft drusens and the soft drusens have become such big over here and there is actually a little bit elevation and this is the drusenoid pigment epithelial detachment the same thing you can see the hard drusens are actually giving you this brighter window defect and the soft drusens are giving you a fuzzy hyperfluorescence and in the center you can see this hyperfluorescence is gradually increasing this is the area of PD and the same area of PD is getting hyperfluorescence so in this pigment epithelial detachment you will see brightness increasing in intensity gradually because of the pooling of the dye but this will not extend beyond this margin because there is no leaks as such there's only pooling of the dye in that space which is created because of the anat because of the detachment of the RPE now the third variety which is there is the basal laminar drusens or the cuticular drusens okay so these cuticular drusens are very tiny drusens and they are uh, about 50 to 75 microns what is important is that they occur in clusters they are all of one size so they are uniformly sized and they are very slightly raised yellow subretinal lesions now on fundus fluorescent angiography because they are also associated with those rp defects you are going to see those hyperfluorescent um, areas and because they are present in thousands of numbers it will look as if there is a starry sky appearance okay yeah now the important thing about cuticular drusen is that they will occur in middle age individuals so a young person can develop drusens that is the cuticular drusens who are usually and these people will usually be asymptomatic because these cuticular drusens mostly occur in the periphery to mid periphery region and very rarely they are present in the macular area now one association with cuticular drusen or the basal laminar drusen is the presence of a pseudo vitelliform lesion okay which uh, so such pseudo vitelliform lesions are uh, can cause vision drop in these patients however they heal very rapidly and they can actually simulate and look like the choroidal neovascular membrane but the prognosis is much better than the choroidal neovascular membrane in these cases so now cuticular drusens as you can see over here these are the small small drusens they're actually very tiny and then they have fused together and present in clusters and almost the entire thing is present in the mid periphery region with very few drusens extending into the macular areas and they're very tiny drusens right so similarly over here in the inset you can see these are the drusens present here and on the fundus fluorescent angiography you can see there are so many hyperfluorescent dots which are present in the retina and they look like stars in the sky and therefore it is called starry sky appearance the term which is given by gas so laminar drusens was actually named as basal lamina because of their presence and their location between the rpe basement membrane and the brux membrane which is present in the choroid now this is nothing different from the other type of drusen because they also share a similar location however the original scientists actually named them like that now since they are present in thousands and numbers and they are present on the rpe so on oct we are going to see this lumpy bumpy appearance of the rpe which is seen in the cuticular drusens now sometimes the cuticular drusen can be associated with the pseudo vitelliform lesion so the true vitelliform lesion is seen in the best dystrophy of or the best disease in the retina however this is pseudo vitelliform lesion in which you can see this lumpy bumpy appearance because of the uh, drusens cuticular drusens and in the area of uh, the macula you can see certain hyporeflected area and the hyperreflective area and this is nothing but the pseudo vitelliform lesion which can also cause vision loss in these patients.
Now, based on the multimodal uh, imaging characteristics, we can actually differentiate the various types of drusens. So, as I told you, hard drusens basically on the normal uh, fundus examination will be small and they will be discrete. The yellowish deposits with well defined margins. Soft drusens will be larger, they will be yellowish white, pale white, and they will have indistinct, uh, indistinct edges. The cuticular drusens will be numerous. They will be dot-like yellow deposits from 25 microns to 75 microns. On fundus autofluorescence, which depends upon the RPE pigments, uh, in hard drusen, you are going to see focal points of reduced autofluorescence. Why? Because there are RPE defects present in relation to the hard drusens. Soft drusen, there is, there is just the RPE detachment. The RPE is still present and therefore you will have hyper autofluorescence. Whereas in case of cuticular drusen, what happens is that they are a little bit triangular and pointed in shape. So what happens is that wherever they are present on the RPE, the central RPE will be lost wherever they are present and surrounding will be actually thickened. So because because of that you will see hypo autofluorescent dot hypo autofluorescence in the center where the RP is lost and the surrounding area will be actually hyper. So you have hypo autofluorescence dot with hyper AF halo that is a hyper autofluorescence halo. Now what do you see on OCT? On OCT you will have a focal RPE uh, and basal lamina elevation in soft drusen you will have this mound like elevation and in cuticular drusen you will have this lumpy bumpy right. Now, there are certain drusens which are even larger and they are called the large colloidal drusens. Importance of large colloidal drusen is that they can also present in the younger people. They can present nasal to the disc also almost entirely on the retina they can be present. And importance is on OCT colloidal drusens have been given a definition in few studies. They say that these are nothing but these are dome like RPE elevation because of the material which is present below the RPE with compression of the ellipsoid zone of the retina. So ellipsoid zone is where the outer segment and the inner segment of the uh, rods and cones or the photoreceptor is present. So what happens in colloidal drusen is that they are so large in shape and so tall that they are going to cause compression of this interdigitation zone or the ellipsoid zone. So this is how the uh, colloidal drusens are going to look like on FFA. And now let us come to the calcified drusen. So it's nothing but sometimes you are going to have a drusen which will look very similar to a hard exudate glistening appearance. That happens because of the calcification and it can happen in any type of drusen. Now drusens can be associated with hyperpigmentation which is not a good sign. So you can see over here there are drusens but what is more prominent is this blackish area of hyperpigmentation. And fundus fluorescent angiography you will have this blocked fluorescence. So blocked fluorescence is nothing but the pigments are going to uh, block us from seeing the underlying choroidal fluorescence and because of that you will have this blackish area in the center because of this hyperpigmentation. Knowing about drusens is so important because drusens are related with the age-related macular degeneration or ARMD. And there is a classification which includes uh, these drusens and this is called the age-related eye disease study which has classified ARMD based on the types of drusens. So category 1 which is called no ARMD is very few small drusens. So if only few small drusens are present that is less than 63 micrometers in diameter it is not an ARMD, right? Next, early ARMD is when you have multiple small drusens, but these drusens are still less than 20. Along with that, you have few intermediate drusens. Intermediate is from 63 microns to 124 microns in diameter, or you have some RPE abnormality. So the presence of small drusens or hard drusens alone is not uh, diagnostic of ARMD. Even for early ARMD, you do need small drusens to be backed up with a few intermediate drusens or some RPE abnormality like an RPE defect or an uh, hyperpigmentation. Coming to intermediate ARMD. In intermediate ARMD, you will have intermediate drusens extensively present, more than one or equal to one large uh, drusen. 
and uh, geographical atrophy not involving the center of fovea so for intermediate armd extensively intermediate uh, drusens should be present and one a large drusen should be present or along with that intermediate drusen you should have geographical atrophy which is not involving the center of fovea advanced armd is when the geographical atrophy will involve the center of the fovea next type of drusens are the familial dominant drusens now these drusens are present quite at a younger age okay so at younger age you might have vision loss because of these drusens and since we're talking about familial they are having a proper genetic test which is available for them now these drusens are also very large and they look like nodules present at the posterior poles and they can go nasal to the optic disc also so nasal to the optic disc and in the macula and in the posterior pole you can find every everywhere these drusens now there are two main varieties the doinis dystrophy and the malaysia leventines type of variety however both of these have the same gene involved so what they say is that the doinis is actually the confluent honeycomb appearance and the radial arrangement is called the leventines variety however both are actually the same uh, the different phenotype of the similar genotype so it is the gene which is present on chromosome number 2 autosomal dominant and you can see these drusens which are present in the macular area along with that even peripapillar area nasal to the disc is also involved similarly this is honeycomb appearance and this is the radial arrangement these drusens you can see 1 2 3 4 these four are arranged in radial pattern and this is arranged in radial pattern and this is more of a diffuse arrangement that is honeycomb arrangement next we have one type of drusens which are associated with armd that means they are a risk factor for developing age related macular degeneration however they are not true drusens the reason they are not true drusen is because of their location instead of being located below the retinal pigment epithelium they are present above the retinal pigment epithelium which is called subretinal deposits because of the subretinal position they are called pseudo drusens and all these drusens are actually interconnected with each other and since they are interconnected they are called reticular pseudo drusens or subretinal drusenoid deposits so you can see in this oct they are actually present above the rp so this is the rp and they are present above the rpe below the photo receptors so you can see this picture you can see how they look they are not very yellowish they are not as yellow as the hard drusens they are not even pale yellow they are more of grayish appearance similarly here you can see this area they are very faint draw, uh, dot like uh, yellow lesions yellowish gray lesion to be more appropriate and to be more exact and they are mostly present in the superior temporal quadrant now they also have a tendency to disappear sometimes and the fundus will totally become normal however they are a risk factor to developing age related macular degeneration and this picture again shows this is the rp and these deposits are present actually above the level of rpe so in our next video we shall be talking about the hard exudates so that's all for today thank you and have a nice day